Welcome to Profiles in Quality, an interview program with the leading names in quality management. I'm Mike Richmond, your host for this series of episodes. Today we chat with trainer, speaker, and author Mike Micklewright, an expert in lean systems. Mike, who writes a column for Quality Digest's Quality Insider e-newsletter, is an energetic proponent for self-sufficiency in U.S. manufacturing. To make Mike feel right at home, we met with him in a leaned-out hotel room in Chicago during the recent IMTS. In this first episode, Mike talks about the importance of root cause analysis, the continued relevance of W. Edwards Deming, and why U.S. organizations should be flexible in tools, but inflexible in principles. Mike, why is lean necessary for U.S. organizations? And how did these companies get to the point where lean was so important? Well, that's a good question. I love that question because actually you could probably re reword the question to why do we have so much waste? I mean, that's what it really comes down to is why is there so much waste in all of our organizations? And I really firmly believe that it really has to do with a lack of knowing and doing root cause analysis the right way. I mean, you know, when you think about, you know, if there's a late shipment or whatever it might be, and, and uh, someone says, well, we can't ever afford that. We can't do that. We cannot have another late shipment to our customer. So someone says, all right, well, well, let's build up inventory. Let's do that. And they build up inventory and everyone's happy and everything goes on, life goes on, and yet we never figured out what was the root cause of the problem. So we build up another waste, inventory. And that's what we seem to do all the time, is just constantly not focusing on getting to the root causes of problems, which just creates more and more waste. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my, uh, my first job uh, was with the Saturn Corporation of General Motors, and it was not even a project when I, uh, it was not even a uh, corporation when I started with, it was a project. And I can remember one of the things that we all had to do was we had to be uh, the best. So we were supposed to benchmark against Toyota. Mm -hmm. And I had all the fluid fill equipment. And one of the things that I, I wanted to do was benchmark something called a transmission top-off unit. Okay. It was a piece of, piece of equipment that all it did at the end of the assembly line, it would sense the level of transmission fluid, uh, in the transmission, and if there's too much, it suck it out, and if there's too little, it put more in. And so I, I went around and looked at all the different plants, and I went to the Toyota GM joint venture out in Fremont, California, the Numi plant, and, and uh, I went out there and I asked the people of uh, uh, Numi, well, where's your transmission top off? I want to see it. They said, well, we don't have one. I said, yeah, you do. I'll show you where it is. And I, I went to the end of the line, showed them where it should be, and it wasn't there. And that was the first time, and I was about 22, 23 years old, it was the first time that it hit me that all that was was a big band-aid. Uh, Toyota didn't have it because they got to the root cause of their problems and they didn't have to have this top-off equipment. So now we look at it today and we say, okay, well, let's study this process and we have this top-off equipment. Well, that's excess processing, isn't it? Let's see if we can find a way of get rid of, getting rid of it. Well, again, why do we need that? Why do we need to constantly look at that? Because we didn't get back to the root cause of the problem in the first place. And, and, you know, it's part of our society. It's, it's everything that we do today. I mean, it's, it's at home. I mean, uh, you know, if you want to go on a diet, uh, do you get to the root cause of overeating or do we just go and get our stomach stitched up or take some diet pills or go on some kind of new regimen where you don't have to exercise at all? You just, you just eat something or, or do something and it'll take the fat away. We don't get to the root causes of any of our problems. So how do American companies deal with that? I think what's most important is, 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 is to really tr try to understand how to get to the root causes of problems. And it's very simple. I mean, it, it, take the five why approach. Just keep asking why, digging deeper and deeper and deeper. I mean, it's one of the cornerstones of the Toyota production system. Uh, Taichi Ono and, and uh, Dr. Shigeo Shingo, they believed in getting to the root cause and asking why five times. And, and the funny thing is, is that, you know, we get, uh, many of us have learned not to ask why. And it, a lot of times it, asks, it starts at a real early age in life. You know, a little kid asks their dad, you know, why, why do we have to die, Dad? And Dad says, well, we have to because we're going to go up there with all our good fellow Catholics or Muslims or Jewish people or whatever, and we're going to be all together. And uh, he says, well, why do we have to go to heaven and, or wherever it might be to join, to be with other people? And the father says, well, you know, it's just uh, it, it's where all the good people go and we're eternally happy and we get rid of all of our sins and we don't have any problems. Well, why do we have to do that, Dad? And finally, Dad says, shut up, kid. So the kid has learned to stop asking why after perhaps two whys. And we do that. A lot of parents do that. We stop our kids from asking why. It doesn't stop there, though. In companies, in organizations, we're not allowed to ask why. Asking why five times in a row or thereabouts is a natural thing to do. But we're told as children, as, as adults, not to ask why. So it's something that has to be relearned. If we get to the root causes of problems, 
lane becomes natural. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned a, a few of the Japanese leaders in the, in the lean movement. Mm -hmm. You've done a lot of work revolving around Deming. Why is he still relevant today? Huh. Well, many reasons. I mean, Deming talked about principles. His 14 points, a lot of people might be familiar with his 14 points. 14 points are basically principles, as he documented in Out of the Crisis. And they, since they are principle-based, they will go on forever. They will live forever. In other words, they were relevant back in 1950 when Dr. Deming went to Japan and taught the Japanese about the 14 principles. They were relevant the day he died in 1993. They're relevant just as much today as they were back then, and they will be relevant in the year 2500. They will always be relevant because they're principles. Americans don't like principles too much. We like tools. We like people to tell us what to do. I want a step-by-step -step approach. Well, people in like the Toyota production system, in fact, uh, so, uh, so, Mr. Toyota, Suchiro, sorry about the pronunciation, <laughs> Suchiro Toyota, okay? Uh, uh, the founder of, of the Toyota production system. He says, every day I think about what this man did for us. Mm -hmm. He influenced all of our organization, the way we run our business. And if you look at his 14 principles, Deming's 14 principles, and you understand them, and you see the Toyota production system, you will see that there's a direct relationship. In fact, if you ever read the Toyota Way by Jeffrey Liker, you'll see there's 14 principles in the Toyota Way as well. It's not a one-to-one -one correlation, but they're so much related to each other. There's this strong relationship. So, so you can see Deming's influence. And it's relevant, as I said, today as much as it ever has been or it will continue to be because it's good business principles and practices. Okay? But we like tools, you know? Right. Well, Deming, I mean, was, was actually noted for being pretty brutal to American leaders Absolutely. in his seminars and Absolutely. to try to shake them out of that, That's right. that complacency <clears throat> and to try to get them to, to be more organized and to use tools and understand that it was leadership that was right. responsible for quality. Right. Now, the Japanese took that and kind of ran with it. Yeah, they, they believed in the tools, uh, the principles, and they developed their own way as long as they stayed committed mm -hmm. to those principles. I, I always love Thomas Jefferson's uh, uh, comment that, that he once made. Thomas Jefferson said, what was it now? Um, um, Be flexible in style, but unwavering like a rock in principles. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really important to understand. Be flexible in style, but unwavering in principles. So if we understand the principles, and we develop our own style. But what do we do as Americans? We don't develop our own styles. We borrow, we steal. We steal Six Sigma or Lean, and we copy other people's processes. No one taught Toyota about 5S or value stream mapping or, or uh, TPM. No one taught them that. They developed it sure. based on those principles. And their now, unique needs in their market. Absolutely, absolutely. But they stuck to the principles. Now, in the United States, what's funny is that we almost believe in the reverse. Granted, this was a Thomas Jefferson comment, and that's the way our country was, was founded, based on those principles, that we should, we should be flexible in style and allow other countries to be flexible in style, but stick, stick to the, the principles of dem democracy. Well, in the, today in the United States, it's more like be flexible in principles but unwavering like a rock in tools. In other words, do Six Sigma. Everyone's doing it. Let's, that's the style, the Six Sigma, the lean and so forth, the ISO 9001. Those are the styles. But you know what, we can be flexible in principles like, uh, uh, yeah, let's do lean, but at the same time, let's do some outsourcing. You know, because outsourcing, well, what, what do you have in outsourcing? You have basically the eight ways. There's excess transportation, there's excess inventory because the transportation may be unreliable, there's waiting. So in outsourcing or offshoring, you have a lot of waste. And yet at the same time, those same companies are trying to do lean. They're flexible in their principles. Mm -hmm.